In part one of this video series, we took a look at the operation of the Qualm Design PPMS VersaLab and the fundamental measurement principles behind the electrical transport option, or ETO. In this video, we will discuss in more detail the hands-on aspects of performing experiments with the ETO and give an overview of using the software. Samples are mounted on the VersaLab measurement puck. When mounting samples, care must be taken to electrically isolate the sample from the center gold pad. A typical method to do this is to adhere cigarette paper using low temperature thermal grease, such as FPAs on end, in order to provide good thermal contact with the puck without shorting the sample electrically. Two channels are available for simultaneous measurement, and samples can be wired in either two-wire or four-wire measurement configurations. You may solder directly to the puck pads. Here we have a sample of YPCO superconductor and a sample of copper foil connected by platinum wires and silver paint. It's a good idea to check your contacts before you load the puck into the VersaLab. You can use the puck box and a standard multimeter to check to see whether you have made good ohmic contacts. Once you are satisfied with your puck contacts, it's time to load the sample into the instrument. Remove the baffle. and lock the puck into the puck insertion tool. Make sure it's snug. The notch is important, as the VersaLab is keyed such that the puck notch faces you. We recommend inserting the puck with the notch pointing 90 degrees away from you, and then rotate the tool. When you feel the puck slip into place, give it a nudge downwards and unlock the tool. Remove the insertion tool and close the baffle. The ETO main module should be connected to the module head, which should be connected to the VersaLab interface plug. Never remove the cable between the main module and the module head while the system is powered up, as this can damage the ETO. However, the interface cable to the VersaLab may be removed while the system is on, which is useful for situations when you want to plug directly into the puck box for diagnostic purposes or room temperature measurements. We've already purged the sample chamber. Activate the ETO option. You have the option of performing resistance, differential resistance, or IV curve measurements. It's a good idea to run a quick measurement to make sure that your contacts are not damaged during the mounting procedure. Press the launch measurement button and check which channels you want to active. For this example, we set both channels to 4 wire. For samples with low resistance, good frequency range is around 18 to 21 Hz. Check auto range for both channels. Hit measure and wait for the measurement to complete. A text dialog will open showing what the instrument is doing in order to execute the measurement. As you can see from the software, the sample connections look good. Both the resistance and phase angle values appear reasonable. It is straightforward to program the VersaLab using the sequence editor. First, let's open a new data file. Add comments to record the properties of your sample. Now, we will command the cryostat to scan temperature from 300 Kelvin to 50 Kelvin. Let's make this a relatively quick measurement, so an increment of minus 5 Kelvin is fine. The default temperature ramp rate is also fine. Next, select resistance measurement and program the two channels the same way that you programmed the initial measurement from the ETO console. It is always a good idea to end your programs with the command to enter standby. Standby mode raises the sample chamber to room temperature and discharges the superconducting magnet, which we'll use a little later. Now, we save the sequence and hit run.
When viewing the graph window, you can select several data parameters to examine. Here, we will choose temperature on the x-axis and look at the resistances measured on both channels. Experiments using the VersaLab can take a while, since we want to gently change temperature to avoid any temperature hysteretic artifacts. However, you should occasionally check in on your measurement as it runs to check for any problems, such as noisy or broken contacts. Okay, the measurement is finished, and the sequence has brought the VersaLab to its standby state. By clicking on a data point, you can see all the information recorded at that point. The superconducting transition for YBCO looks good, and the copper is demonstrating typical metallic behavior. In order to demonstrate the use of the magnetic field, we will now measure the Hall effect in p-type germanium. The Hall effect is the phenomenon whereby the current traveling through the material will be deflected by the applied magnetic field, resulting in a measurable Hall voltage. The sign of the reading will indicate whether the dominant carriers are negative electrons or positive holes. We have soldered the corners of the sample in order to create a cross pattern between the voltage and current contacts. We will again insert the puck into the sample chamber and check the resistance reading using 100 mA excitation. Looks good. Open a new data file. This time, we will keep the sample at room temperature and only scan the magnetic field. The VersaLab is equipped with a 3 Tesla superconducting magnet. All we need for this measurement is 1 Tesla. Let's set the scan from negative 10,000 oersteads to 10,000 oersteads using steps of 500 oersteads. Set to measure the resistance on channel 2 using the same parameters as on the ETO console. Again, in the sequence with the standby command. As you can see, the slope of the resistance versus magnetic field is positive, which corresponds to holes being the dominant charge carriers. As you can see, the electrical transport option is a powerful tool for characterizing materials. With it, you can catalog conduction characteristics, observe magnetoresistive effects, or discover phase transitions thanks to the VersaLab's abilities to sweep temperature from 50 to 400 Kelvin and to sweep magnetic field from negative 3 to positive 3 Tesla. Before performing experiments, you must be sure to have good contacts and try to get some preliminary idea of whether your sample is a high or low impedance material.